Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at how you draw ionic bonding. Um, I'm going to work you through loads of examples here because you need to be able to do this really confidently. You need to be able to look at the examples that you've learnt and you need to be able to apply it to unknown things as well. So even if you're familiar with this from your studies before, it really is worth the time um, focusing on this, practicing this and learning how to do this really, really well. Um, if you want some questions to go with this, it's over in the workbook which you can get from my website. In ionic bonding, we have the transfer of electrons from metals, which are on this side of the periodic table, to non-metals, which are on this side of the periodic table. The metal ions are going to end up with a positive charge. The non-metal ions are going to end up with a negative charge. Now, I would love for you to be able to remember how to work that out properly, but as a quick cheat, things in group one all the way over here are going to have a plus one charge. Things in group two are going to have a plus two charge. Things in group six are going to have a minus two charge. And things in group seven are going to have a minus one charge. What makes an atom happy? Now this of course is a ridiculous question because it gives an atom emotion and atoms don't have emotions, they're just atoms. But when an atom wants to achieve the aim that it wants to get to is having a full outer shell and that will make it happy. Here we have our noble gases, two of them, neon and argon, and these are very inert gases, they don't do much because they already have this full outer shell here. They already have eight electrons in that energy level, they don't want any more, they need to lose any, they don't need to gain any. And this is the format that all atoms are trying to emulate, they are trying to get full outer shells. Other atoms that don't have full outer shells, like oxygen and fluorine, are highly reactive. And they are highly reactive because they are desperately in search of these extra electrons, or in some cases losing electrons, so that they can get this confirmation of having a full outer shell. Looking at the bonding between sodium and chlorine, sodium has one electron on the outer shell and chlorine has seven electrons on the outer shell. Now, what is going to happen here is that this electron, sodium is going to lose this electron and it's going to be transferred over here to the chlorine. So the state that we are going to end up with at the end is chlorine is going to have its seven original electrons it's going to have the extra one that it's gained from sodium, and we indicate these are ions by drawing square brackets around them, and we need to add on the charges. Because sodium has lost one electron, it is going to have a plus one charge, and because chlorine has gained one electron, it is going to have a minus one charge. Magnesium oxide. Magnesium has our two electrons on its outer shell and oxygen six electrons on its outer shell. Now magnesium wants to lose these two electrons and oxygen has space for two electrons. So these two are just going to go over here, giving us oxygen with its seven, sorry, six original electrons and two that it has picked up from magnesium. We now need our square brackets. Because oxygen has lost two electrons, it is going to have a two plus charge. And because oxygen has gained two electrons, it is going to have a two minus charge. In magnesium chloride, magnesium has two electrons on its outer shell. Chlorine has seven electrons on its outer shell. So magnesium wants to lose two. Chlorine wants to gain one, which means magnesium is going to lose one electron to one chlorine and the other electron to another chlorine, giving us the overall formula of MgCl2 for magnesium chloride. Again, magnesium is going to have a two plus charge and each of the chlorines is going to have gained one electron, giving them a minus one charge. Aluminium chloride now, there are three electrons on the outer shell of chlorine, aluminium, that it wants to get rid of, and chlorine has space for one electron. So aluminium is going to bond with three chlorines 
each one of them taking one electron from the chlorine, which is going to give us aluminium with a three plus charge and three chlorines, each of them having a minus one charge. Last one here, sodium hydroxide. Now this is a little bit tricky because we have two types of bonding going on here. You'll notice here is sodium with our one electron on its outer shell, and here is our hydroxide ion. There is already covalent bonding going on in a hydroxide ion between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Now we leave this alone. You'll notice I've introduced a third symbol here, a triangle symbol, which is going to denote the uh, electron that we've got from the hydrogen. Now, exactly the same as before, this electron from sodium is going to go and fill in the gap in the space around the oxygen there. So now we have sodium ions, which are going to have a positive charge, and hydroxide ions which are going to have a negative charge.